Hello friends, it's finally here. The seven star terror raid event for Mewtwo is now live in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to cover all of the details for this raid as well as the best build to go in and beat this Mewtwo in your games. So it's about 4 a.m. here in the UK and after a grueling three hours, kind of figured out the best build and the best approach to the seven star Mewtwo raid when you're going in to try and beat it in your games. This is undoubtedly the most difficult seven star terror raid event that we've had in the game so far and i will uncategorically go on record and say i don't believe this mewtwo raid can be done solo in your games you're going to need to go online and pair up with players to be able to do this and competent players at that with a kind of the same strategy as what you're kind of running and have a good team ethic when you're going in against this mewtwo because it is absolutely ridiculously hard but we're going to get into all the details and we'll show you exactly the build that you're going to need to take in to make this easier for you to actually complete in your games. So starting off with all the details, the Mewtwo will be running from today as of recording this video on the 1st of September and running until the 17th of September. So we've got a good amount of time to go in and get this Mewtwo in your game. It is going to be catchable, of course. It is going to be level 100. It will have its unnerve ability, which is its hidden ability. It will never be shiny, so it is shiny locked and it will have once caught the mightiest mark. It is going to be a psychic terror type and it will have a held item. Unlike some of the previous seven star terror raid event Pokemon, this Mewtwo will be holding the chest or berry. It will have the moves Psy Strike, Aura Sphere, Ice Beam, Calm Mind and additional move will be rest. So what rest does is once the shield breaks, it uses rest. It heals up all of its health that's been taken so far. And with that chest of berry, it instantly wakes up, recovering from that sleep condition that you get from the rest. So that is something to keep in mind when you're going into this raid. Uh, it is only catchable once because it is a seven star raid Pokemon, but you can go in and do multiple of these if you want after you've caught it for the really good item drops that we're going to get from this raid. Now, unlike previous seven star terror raid events where the HP multiplier for the terror raid boss would be 30, so it'd be times 30 what the HP number would be. Mewtwo is actually set to times 50, making it that bit much more difficult. So its HP stat will be around 17,650 and uh, not around the 10,000 mark that we thought it would be with that 30 times multiplier. Uh, the damage that you're going to be doing to Mewtwo when the shield is up, because the shield goes up at the start of the raid, uh, with standard moves when you're not terrestrialized so moves that are doing neutral damage they're going to be doing 20 percent of the damage that they would have done normally uh, if you're terrestrialized they're going to be doing 30 percent they would be doing normally and if you've got a matching terror type to the move that you're using it will be doing 70 percent of its actual damage that we're normally doing through the shield also mewtwo just to not like other seven star turrets does have maximum ev investment in its defense and its special defense stat with six uh, remaining evs in its special attack as well it is running a modest nature so boosting that special attack even more uh Psy strike does hit on the defensive side although it is coming off me to special attacking side so that's something to keep in mind as well mew on the other hand it is going to be the best candidate to go into this raid with it is going to get a 50% boost to its HP stat and a 20% boost across the board to all of its other stats. So it makes sense to bring Mew into this raid against the Mewtwo and hence the reason why we had a Mew uh, Mystery Gift that is still currently running. If you need a Mew in your games, you can still access the Mystery Gift that is running currently at the moment to get a Mew in your games. And you, all you need to do is go into your Mystery Gifts Use the code get your mew. It'll be on the screen now for you so you can follow along and in the description below. So use that, you'll be able to get a mew, and that's what we are going to be taking in, building and taking into this Mewtwo Terror Raid battle. Now for the item drops, the item drops are absolutely ridiculous to kind of match how strong this raid is. You're going to get a lot of large and XL candies. You're also going to get the King's Rock item. You're going to get Bright Powder. You're going to get three bottle caps, three ability capsules, and a hundred psychic terror shards. So it's going to be a really good raid for 
farming those psychic terror shards if you need them and then an array of other items as well that you're going to get as random drops as well as the large candies xl candies rare candies big nuggets comet shards ability capsules ability patches ep ups bottle caps modest nature mints and more psychic terror shards so in a nutshell that is the mewtwo terror raid event that is running now from the 1st of september until the 17th of september now to access this event in your game you're going to need to come into your poker portal once you're in your poker portal make sure that you are connected online and then come down to mystery gifts and then check poker portal news this will just update everything in paldea and update mainly your maps so that seven star terror raid event shows on your map so when you go to your map you can then locate the seven star terror raid event den and it will look like a six star terror raid uh, but it will have the psychic mark so this is the one that we're wanting to look for once you've marked it on your map you can head over to it and then enter the raid but getting on to the build how you're going to want to go into the raid i'm doing this after of course i have caught the mewtwo already but the Mew that you are going to want to use is going to be this build here. It's going to be probably one of the most consistent builds that we've got at the moment. But before we get into the build itself, I do need to give a big shout out to uh, Hoodlum Callum, who a lot of you might know already, who came up with this build. I have tweaked the EVs myself, but they did get the initial idea started for this particular build that we are going to be showcasing in today's video. So the Mew is going to have a bug terror type. That is going to be probably the best terror type to go into this raid with. It is going to hold the metronome item, be set to level 100 as well, and make sure that you do hyper train its IVs as well. So the move set that we're going to be using on this Mew is going to be Life Dew. That's going to be there. So it gives you a form of recovery for you and your team members if you need it. It's probably the move I use least going into the raids but it is there just in case you need it uh, just keep an eye on the hp of your partnering pokemon when you're in the raid and if your partners do need some hp boosting you can use the life due to recover yourself and them at the same time struggle bug is the move that we're going to use to lower the special attack on mewtwo every time we use it and it works through the shield so it's perfect as well because the shield goes up turn zero of this raid Sword Stance is there to boost our attacking stats, so we want to use that three times to get to plus six. And Leech Life is the main attacking move that we're going to be using with Mew to not only do damage to the Mewtwo, but we're also going to be recovering health when we do hit the Mewtwo. So it's a nice way to have that recovery throughout the raid, as well as doing some big damage with it as well. It is advisable though, one of the things that I haven't done that I would suggest doing before going into the raid uh, with the Mew with this particular build is to PP max your Mew with that Leech Life because you want to maximize all the PP you can because this is going to be a raid that goes on for quite some time unlike other 7 star terror raids that we've had in the past so basically this is the moveset that you want to use um, and this is the EV spread with an adamant nature make sure you've got that adamant nature there to boost the attack even more so 252 HP EVs and 196 in attack EVs. You want four in your defense, four in your special defense, and then 52 in your speed EVs. That's 52 in the speed. Make sure that you do get the jump on the Mewtwo every time after you've got that Omni Boost so you can get things like a struggle bug off before the Mewtwo attacks, which is quite important for allowing that attack step because it is gonna go for a Calm Mind turn one. You want to reduce the damage as soon as possible before you take any damage. So that just helps out a little bit. And I feel like you've got the EV investment to kind of put into the Mew here just to give you a little bit of a boost going into the raid because you do need every little bit uh, that helps with the Mew. But that is basically the Mew build here, of course. Uh, the metronome item is quite important as well. So um, how the metronome item works is every time you consecutively use a move, it gains more power so the more you use a move consecutively the stronger that move gets so once you have got your three sword stances up your plus six uh, attack stat and then you're using that leech life consecutively after you've weakened the mewtwo then you're going to be doing more damage every time you kind of click in with that move now the basic premise of this mew is to go into the raid and the big caveat to this is you're going to have to have competent team members with you that all have the kind of same goal in mind to beat the Mewtwo so this raid is going to go on for a lot longer 
the raid timer lasts a lot longer in this raid as well. So don't worry about the raid timer and comparing it to six and other seven star terror raid events that we've had in the past. The raid timer is kind of going to match the HP multiplier that the Mewtwo has had. So you're going to want to go into this raid turn one. You're going to want to go for those struggle bugs and your partners are going to want to go for struggle bugs as well. Mewtwo on turn zero is going to go for a calm mind and then set its shield up. So the biggest thing that you want to do is make sure that you are keeping that special attack stat of the Mewtwo in check. So you want to continue probably going for three to four struggle bugs at this point. Make sure that your partnering Pokemon are doing the same as well. Uh, once the Mewtwo is not doing a lot of damage with that side strike to you and your partner in Pokemon, it's about time that you can go for those sword stances so you can kind of start setting yourself up to do some damage. So go for those three sword stances and then start firing off those leech lives. You're going to be able to do some good damage to the Mewtwo. While you're doing this, of course, just keep an eye on the HP bars of you and your partner in Pokemon. If Life Dew is needed, then click into it. But more often than not, the side Strike is not going to be doing that much damage. And the Leaf Light is going to be kind of recovering you off anyway. So uh, there will be a point in the raid where the Mewtwo nullifies the stats on your side of the field. So you're going to have to concentrate on getting those sword stances up. But make sure you keep an eye on the Mewtwo as well when it nullifies any stat drops on its side of the field. Because its attack then will be kind of reset. It will start to go for those calm minds again so you're going to have to go for the struggle bugs once again it's kind of like rinse and repeating the same process where you start going for the struggle bugs get three off until its size strikes or whatever attack it's going for into you is not doing enough damage and then you can get set up again and start going for those leech lives between you and your partnering pokemon if you're all using the same sort of strategy you will be able to break the shield quite quickly as soon as the shield is broke Mewtwo is going to go for that rest. It's going to recover all of that health off. Chester Berry is going to activate and it's going to probably go for another calm mind. So at that point, you want to go for the struggle bugs again. Mewtwo will nullify the stats on your side of the field once again. So you're going to have to go for another three swords dances. Get up to plus six. Make sure you're keeping that special attack in check with the struggle bug as and when you need it. And then just start launching off those leech lives. And if you all kind of start attacking at the same time, you're going to be able to deal with this Mewtwo quite easily. And it is, like I say, one of the most difficult raids that we've ever had in the games. But once you've been able to do it, you'll be able to kind of beat the Mewtwo and then get it in whatever Pokeball you want. And you can see here, we went for the Beast Ball with our Mewtwo. And once you have caught it, of course, you it will have the Mightiest Mark, uh, Modest Nature and all of that. And it will have the moveset that you kind of have seen it used throughout the battle. And then also just to note as well, at the end of the battle, if you have went in and beat this Mewtwo with Mew, then your Mew will also have access to the Mightiest Mark as well. But not only that, you're going to get a ridiculous amount of item drops as well from this Mewtwo 7 star terror raid event. And just like we covered, you're going to get those three ability patches. You're going to get three gold bottle caps and you're going to get an absolute boatload of psychic terror shards as well as a lot of level up candies, which makes it a very very good event to kind of do and get involved with but that is everything that i wanted to cover today if we do get any more strategies that give you any possibility of doing this as a solo raid i will of course cover them here on the channel but i feel at this stage after doing so much testing i don't feel like the mewtwo is going to be able to be soloed in this game it might be the first seven star terror raid event where you're going to have to go online and pair up with partners uh, you can do it with randoms i did it with randoms before and thankfully all of the randoms that i paired up with had a similar strategy to what we were running here um on the channel that we've just covered so with that struggle bug with the leech life uh, there was variations with x scissor as well of course and um, there was obviously the acid spray and dog pulse combination as well from one of the moves that worked quite effectively in conjunction with what we were doing but you all got to be cohesive when you go into the raid. You've got to keep that special attack from the Mewtwo in check. That is one of the most important things. And once it is in check, then you get yourself set up. You reduce the defenses on the Mewtwo. If you've got Acid Spray uh, or you just start attacking if you're going with the set that we're featuring here in today's video. So that is everything, friends. It is going nearly 4.30 a.m. here over here in the UK and I feel pretty beat. But hopefully this build helps you when you go online and you get into these raids with 
randoms or people that you know going into the raid with people that you know is going to be a lot easier because you're all going to be on the same page you're all going to be doing the same thing keeping an eye out for the same things that we've covered in this video today that allow you to kind of beat this Mewtwo pretty easily uh, you've just got to have patience and you're going to be doing the same things over and over and over again you're going to be reducing the special attack you're going to be setting yourself up you're going to be chipping away at its damage you're going to have to do that quite a few times throughout the raid before you can beat it uh, but you can beat it it is beatable it is obtainable but unfortunately for this time around it doesn't look like it is something that we can beat solo in our games hope you found today's video useful friends and let me know down in the comment section below uh, what your thoughts are on this raid like i say i think it's the most ridiculously hard raid i was not expecting it to be this hard but it's very cool it's very cool that we got something this difficult in the game but i've tried everything pretty much for a solo run and had no success at all the me too is just super 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 overpowered and i feel like you need teammates and probably that's the whole reason behind the raid as well going in and doing it with other players online like they probably intended these seven star raids to do uh, but I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. And I will catch you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye. <laughs>